And here we are. It's Friday. That's right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to Let's Have a Chat Friday edition, Forbes Friday edition. It is Friday, October 4th, 2019, the fourth day of October. Well underway. It's Friday. I hope you had a great work week. Uh, if you're not working, well, that's on you because it doesn't matter what your status is. You should always be working. You should always be doing something. You should always be hustling, always be grinding because in this day and age, if we're not hustling and grinding, you know, it, that's on us. It's just that simple. So how are you? How's it going? How's life? I hope you had a good one. I hope you're having a good one. And if not, well, again, that falls on you. So with that being said, every Friday we get together and we talk about something out of the Forbes website, the Forbes newsletters, the Forbes magazine, Forbes this, Forbes audio, whatever. And in this case, we got two things and two things. Um, one is on the hinging on the fringe of, uh, what would I say? I would call it uh, politics on the fringe of that. Well, it's got to do with politics. I, I don't like talking politics because my opinion is right, your opinion is wrong, and you know, that's just how it is. It's like the same thing with medicine, it's the same thing with religion, don't get me started on religion, because my views on religion are right, yours are wrong. And so I don't talk about it that way, I don't hurt your feelings, and that way your feelings don't get hurt. So with that being said, uh, good evening. All right, so first thing I wanna talk about is Nickelback. There was a group, once upon a time there was a group, and they sang a song, and it was a one-hit wonder, and the name Nickelback has become a joke ever since because, again, people use it as a joke. Hey, how much is that? How much did it cost to go to that, uh, that concert? Oh, no, it was it was almost free. They gave me my Nickelback. See, stuff like that. So it's, it's like that. So anyway, so they wrote this song. They sang this song. It's called Photograph. Look at this photograph. Da, 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 da. Well, the president used it in a parody video and uh, apparently the group claimed copyright. Well, the song sales are going through the roof for that song. But these guys yank and pull the rug underneath from underneath it. And well, what have you got? You know, it's just like, well, is that a wise thing to do? Is that good business practice? Because they say, you know, even bad news is good news. Because again, you know, no news is good news. Good news is good news. And bad news is good news. One, because again, you're in the news. People are talking about you. You're on somebody's mind and they're thinking about you and they're working with you. And in this case, they're buying from you. So why would you want to go ahead and pull the rug out from underneath your cash cow in 2019, considering the venues that you're playing now, um, you have to hear it over, hey, can you reset the pins? And um, I'm just, I'm having fun with this. You know, if there's Nickelback fans out there, kudos to you, but I'm just having some fun with this. Again, it just makes no sense. Why would you want to not capitalize? This would have been a great time to maybe redo the video and capitalize on that. Recapitalize on the video, recapitalize on the song, get the song put out there. You know, over the, over the years, you hear, um, campaigns or, or candidates running running for office they'll take over a song and they'll use it in their um stumping you know when they get introduced at um at uh, rallies the political rallies you know it's kind of like the wwe wrestlers when they come on stage they have that music and all the fireworks and all that the exact same thing because it gets people's attention and i remember i i want to say it was clinton but it doesn't matter uh they were using Fle fleetwood max um Oh, it was a song from Fleetwood Mac. Anyway, they were using it, and then Fleetwood Mac said, no, don't use it, and then it got used. So, you know, back and forth. But again, meanwhile, here's a band from the 70s that was huge in the 70s, uh, pretty good size in the 80s. By the 90s, they were pretty much done. But they're still touring. They're still very popular. They're still out there. And yet uh, somebody picked up their song and said, hey, we want to use it. We want to get attention. And so the news, the news media, when Fleetwood Mac said no, now Nickelback is saying no. That's where it all comes up. You know, probably these fans will never, you know, I'm sorry, not the fans, the politicians and that group, outside of that group, the followers of the politician will probably never even see it. But because the, the uh, Nickelback, the band, chose to enforce their copyright, which they have every right to do as an author, I understand it, I'm all for it, but again, I need some news. I need a shot at redemption. I need a photo opportunity. 
Don't want to don't. How does the song go? Don't want to end up in a cartoon graveyard. There we go. So uh, again, I'll take it. So I get it. But again, when they're flat out blatantly taking your stuff and using it in a negative way, in a negative manner, um, I get it. I understand that you want to disassociate yourself. But again, it's politics. It's politics. And here we have the highest office in the land and they want to use your video. Again, free publicity. Free publicity. You couldn't get that kind of publicity in 2019. So it just goes to show that, hey, even though you don't like this, you don't like who's who's playing your song, guess what? I hear it. I hear it. I'm interested. I won't download it. I won't pay the 99 cents for the song on iTunes, but there are people out there doing it because sales of that song are skyrocketing all of a sudden. So kudos to Nickelback and also uh, jeers, jeers to, to Nickelback again for pulling the plug on that. So that takes care of that. Mark Cuban, Shark Tank, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, he owned broadcast.com, um, self-made billionaire. There we go, self-made billionaire. Uh, we're doing, not so long ago, I talked about Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is this digital currency, and it's the wave of the future. It's going that way. But uh, he wants out of that. He doesn't want to do any of that. He says there is no, quote, intrinsic value in Bitcoin. Um, you know, instant on, always on, 24-7, instantly connected. Right now, somebody on the other side of the planet could be listening to this conversation. Then again, maybe not. But a common cur a common currency is what's going to happen. And if you don't buy into it now, you're going to be forced into it later and you're not going to like it. So maybe he's up to something. Maybe he's up producing his own blockchain currency, cryptocurrency, and uh, he's just pushing himself away from the Bitcoin because this guy, he, he knows stuff and he, he's, he's on the, he's on the, um, on the pulse of what's coming down the line. And he's ensuring that he's putting himself in a good position to take advantage of what's coming down the line. So um, don't count Mark Cuban out, but maybe just keep an eye on what he's up to. But again, digital currency is the wave of the future. We're already kind of doing that now with our debit cards, credit cards, online banking. Now, all of a sudden, um, oh, I forgot the name of the, but it's a um, long-time investment company, long-time investment firm. They just announced zero commission investing, meaning that there's no extra charge to invest no fees to invest digitally on their platform. Kudos to them because again, they see the writing on the wall. They know what's coming. They also see not enough people are investing and what do they have to do? Get rid of those commission fees because again, those commission fees will nickel and dime you and they'll nickel and dime you and then they will nickel and dime you until you're done. And folks, ask me, I, I dealt with someone um, a long time, long, long time um, broker and nickel and dime, nickel and dime. Every time you spoke to them, every time you asked them a question, every time you opened an, an email, it was like nickel and diming. And it, it got so bad, I just stopped dealing with them. Um, you know, they were, again, aside from being fed bad information, uh, which, you know, I'm not complaining, but what I am saying is, you got to be careful. So you got to do your own homework. So guess what? That zero commission is going to do, make you and force you do your own, force you to do your own homework. But again, if you're not investing in this market right now, you know we're riding up, we're riding the top of the wave. But there's stuff behind it that's slowly going to start coming up on a wave. That's what you need to do your homework on and start looking at that. Start looking at that. And in the meantime, you got to do your homework no matter what you're doing. So ensure you're doing your homework and take this is your weekend homework. Find what stocks you would invest in if you had $1,000 to invest. There's your homework for this weekend. Anyway, other than that, I thank you for your time. I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. I thank you for viewing this later on. And everyone that stops by and watches me live, thank you very much. And have a great week. I will talk to you on Monday when we talk sports and leadership because, hey, stuff, stuff's always happening in sports. And I no doubt this weekend is going to be chock full of it. Have a good one. Have a great evening. Talk to you soon.